Oh no! I don't know if this liquid is basic or acidic, and I don't have my litmus paper with me. Do you have a cabbage? Why, yes I do! So let's make our own litmus paper! Woohoo! Today, we will be making our own litmus paper, and then we'll be testing it against professionally made stuff so we can see how accurate it is. That's right. No more spending a small fortune on litmus paper. How much does it cost to buy litmus paper? Oh, for one sheet? Mm. About a penny. It's a very small fortune. How much would it cost to make our own? About half of that. Yeah! Half a penny, saving money every day. But I did have to buy an entire head of cabbage, which I'm not going to eat, so about a penny. Anyways, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of our stuff. And punch the like button as well if you enjoy it. It really helps us out. So, do we really only need cabbage to make litmus paper? Yeah, cabbage and some paper. Uh, you could just use normal paper if you wanted, but we are going to use some watercolor paper and coffee filters because they absorb better, so it gives a better product. I just got a degree in palindromes. Now they call me... Dr. Awkward. <laughs> Let's get everything ready. We're talking flavonoid molecules today, so we need either a red or purple head of cabbage. We need to extract the juice somehow. The two most common methods of doing that are either boiling the leaves in water and then straining them, or blending the cabbage into a paste and straining that. We'll try both of them. For the boiling method, just make some disgusting cabbage tea. Put some water in a small pot and pour in about a quarter head of chopped cabbage. Then let it boil for about 10 minutes. Pour the mixture through a coffee filter. Now feel free to enjoy your delicious tea, but you probably shouldn't. Blech. If you want to avoid heating the water, you can simply chop up a quarter head of cabbage and put it into a small blender. Use a bit of water to make sure it's a liquid. coffee filters to strain out the goopy stuff, leaving a pure juice. Both methods are effective, but we found the blending method to be a little bit stronger concentration of cabbage juice. Now we can soak the paper, but first I kind of want to point out here, the boiled method is kind of like a very deep blue, whereas the chopped up and blended is pure purple, like a very rich deep purple. The blended method does give you a much higher concentration of the actual juice that we want. Okay, so we're gonna cut the paper we brought into strips, and then we'll just drop them in and leave them until they're saturated. The longer you leave them in the juice, the more saturated they're going to become. So let's just go ahead and do that right now. Here. We need to test out our tea. Get a cup, Eliana. Oh no, Jonathan. Yes, this is good. It would be wasteful to not use this delicious tea that we have made. Don't freak, oh, Jonathan. Are you sure this won't like kill you? Hey, cabbage is as cabbage does. Believe it or not, it's actually not that bad. <laughs> what is wrong with you? <laughs> this is awful. The smell is like cabbage. Now imagine drinking cabbage tea. Pretty much that. <laughs> so we're going to let these soak for a couple of hours. And while we wait for that, we're just going to continue on with our testing because I made up a batch of these yesterday. In order to dry them out, just take them, place them onto a sheet of aluminum foil and let them air dry. It takes about an hour for them to air dry. We'll just set these aside and we'll continue on. Now the fun part. Let's explain before we test these. All chemicals can be grouped into two broad classes, acids and bases. We measure how basic or acidic things are on the pH scale. Anything under 7 is an acid, and anything over 7 is basic or alkaline. Acids have a higher concentration of hydrogen ions, and bases have a higher concentration of hydroxide ions. Things like vinegar are acidic, and things like soap are basic. We will prepare a few different samples of different materials, and then we'll test them out. First up, distilled water. Let's use one of the professional ones to see what it turns in. To use it, you just dip it in, and then it turns a different color. Then we can 
compare it on the color sheet. As it turns out, our water, distilled water, is like a seven and a half to an eight, which means it's pretty much neutral. This is neither basic nor acidic. We'll use one of ours, dunk it in. There should be not very much color change at all. As you can see, there isn't. Okay. So far, so good. Next up, vinegar. So according to this uh, sheet, huh, vinegar is an acid. Oh, on the pH scale, it's a three. So let's check out our homemade. Okay, so it's oh. turning kind of like a purple, purple, Ooh. purple violet. Cool. We are going to have to make up our own litmus scale color scheme because it's going to be different with ours, obviously, than the professional stuff. So we'll save this one aside as vinegar. Next, let's try lemon juice. Okay, there we go. Now, if we compare it, oh, it's, I'd say it's more acidic than the vinegar. Let's try the homemade stuff. Very cool. So that's, a, yeah, it's a similar color as to the vinegar, yeah. which makes sense. So we just tested two acids. Now let's try something basic. We're going to mix in two tablespoons of baking soda to distilled water. Ah, I love my wine glass full of baking soda with my cabbage soup. <laughs> Makes me feel high class. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's test it out. So according to this, this should be a darker color. Okay, okay so that's green. So then it's, like... it's a nine, mm -hmm. nine on the pH. So it's fairly basic. Let's see what this is. So before, when it was an acid, they turned kind of a pinkish purple. So we'll see what happens when we put this in with the cabbage strips. Okay, so that definitely okay. turned darker. Yeah. Now, just to show that this is actually working and not just... I'll dip the other end into the vinegar to give you the color difference. Yeah. Oh. Looks like, for homemade litmus paper, acids turn it kind of a red, and bases turn it a blue. Cool. Very cool. Okay, so there's our baking soda. There's too much in there, but that's okay. TSP trisodium phosphate is a strong cleaner, and I know that it's very basic. So let's get some distilled water, and we're, we'll just pour in a fair amount. For those of you that remember, this is how we made hydrogen gas by mixing in some aluminum foil. So let's not do that. There we go. So that's TSP, trisodium phosphate. So let's test it out. I'll do the Professional stuff. Oh, Ooh. that's like black. Wow. So that's like a 12 or maybe a 13 on the pH scale. Okay, wow. Very cool. So then this should be turning it like another dark color. Yeah, look at Lovely. that. So that's like a dark green with purple. Let's try milk. It's a bit of a base. Let's try an antacid. And it, we'll let those fizz down a little bit. We're also going to test out this fruit plus veggie juice. So we'll test them both out. So this one, oh yeah, that's pretty dark. Okay. So that's basic. And let's try this juice. Hugo. It's hard to tell if it's the color is it. actually staining it. It's slightly acidic, which is what you're going to expect to find with most juices. Our homemade litmus paper is really good at indicating anything from a five or lower or a nine or higher. If it's too close to being neutral, it doesn't really pick up on anything. So we're gonna switch this up a little bit and we're gonna pour the cabbage juice directly into different solutions. And then the entire solution hopefully will change color. So while I do that, why don't you explain the reasons why it changes color? Red cabbage contains anthocyanin, which is a type of flavonoid molecule. As the case is here, flavonoids are usually very colored. The interesting property of anthocyanins is that the color of the compound is highly dependent on the pH of the solution. All of the household solutions that we tested today fall at different points on the pH scale. There are very complicated reasons why they turn the color that they do, but we don't have enough time to talk about all of them. So if you want to know, let us know in the comments and we'll get back to you. So the final conclusion being, they work well for anything that is over 9, under 5. 
if it's too close to the 7, it doesn't really pick it up. Um, and it's not super accurate. You can tell it really quickly whether it's an acid or a base, but that's about all you can get out of it. Thanks for watching. You guys are the best. We have new content coming out every week, so make sure you subscribe. Stay tuned because bloopers are coming up. Anything with a pH over 7 is really basic chemistry. <laughs> <laughs>